Welcome to What a Creep, the show with Margot Donahue and Sonia Mansfield talking about creeps from the past to the present. This is your quick guide to the biggest creeps, jerks, assholes, and losers, the best of the worst. From two nice ladies who want the world to be a little less creepy. Welcome back to What a Creep. This is Margot Donahue, and my cohort in creepitude, as always, is the amazing Sonia Mansfield. Hey, Sonia. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. This is an episode that we aired last year at this time. It's about Ooh. George Washington. And we're doing it this week because it's a holiday week. It's one of those, like, it's Canada Day, and it's July 4th. And it's America! a... F yeah! <laughs> We're not going to curse here. I'll wait till after the intro. Yeah. But yeah, we uh, we just taken the week off. So we are doing this special episode today. We want to just wish everybody a happy fourth. Be safe. Don't run around with firecrackers. Don't, yeah, don't goof don't, around with don't that hold shit. On. <laughs> don't hold on to your fireworks, y'all. That's how you lose hands and fingers. Um, take care of your dogs and your pets. They're all very scared right now. Yes. With all the fireworks that are going off. And also, it's okay to not feel very patriotic right now. <laughs> all of those things are true. All those things are true. So just keep that in mind. Um, we will be back next week with a new episode of What a Creep. And also, this week, we're replaying on Dorking Out our Mm -hmm. episode about Beverly Hills Cop because Beverly Hills Cop three or four is this four 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 is being released (laughs) so we're releasing this episode without talking about that one but that's how these things go (laughs) yes that's how it works (laughs) all right so here we have George Washington and the case of Ona Judge we are the podcast that doesn't talk about the weather. We are the podcast that talks about creeps <laughs> from the past to the present. We have I love me history creepage. I love me mm-hmm. an old tiny creep. I love me an out of the box creep for people. And today we are covering George Washington. And that's for all of you out there that think I hate Never heard white of male Christian men. <laughs> Never heard of him. He wasn't very Christian, by the way. But anyway, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get to that. You can find us on Facebook. We do have a basic Facebook page, but that's where most people go to complain about our language. We use salty language in this program. Yeah, we do fucking deal with it. (laughs) We are most interactive in our most interactive. That feels like very Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. We are are most interactive in our Facebook group. And you type in What a Creep Podcast Group. You ask to join. We have three questions you need to answer. And then you can come on in. And we just talk about news and creeps and and stuff like that. All that good stuff. The fun stuff and the dirty stuff. Yes, it's the best group in Facebook to join. We really appreciate it. We also are on Twitter at CreepPod because somebody had What a Creep on Twitter for over 10 years and never used it. Creep! And we're on Instagram at What a Creep Podcast. So please follow us, follow us in those places. Excuse me. This smoke is like <laughs> scrambling my brain. Yes, it's going to mess with through. your head. It really will. Sonia, do you want to tell them about the website, please? Yes. You could go to whatacreeppodcast.com and it's everything you ever wanted to know about our show, but we're, and we're afraid to ask. You shouldn't be afraid to ask, but you might be. You can find everything there. We have links to all of our past episodes and in each of those little summaries are show notes because we source every single thing we do. We are not making this stuff up. We want to give credit where credit is due. We want to support our local journalists, the people that do the hard work. So if you're looking for a deeper dive on any of the creeps we talk about, go in there and read all the stories. It's good stuff. We also have a link to our merch shop. I don't know why I like to say it like that. but shop. So you could get T-shirts and tote bags and face masks and all kinds of awesome stuff with our logos on it. Please do that. And there's also a link to our Patreon page. Tell them about that, would you please? Absolutely. So P A T R E O N, we have our first eight seasons up there. I put a bunch of Ooh. stuff there. And it's if you already are a member and it's you know, you get them through the app or whatever, just so you know, these are the ones I just put up there. They're no longer available for freezies in our basic feed. Jared Kushner, bleh, Jim Jones, bleh. Bill O'Reilly. Woody Allen, A Series of Sports Creeps, Evil Knievel, Amy Kremer, Marlon Brando, James Whitey Bulger, 
and <laughs> Keith Ranieri from Nexium. All those are now mm-hmm. behind the Patreon wall, and they're going up in the next couple of weeks. Like one or two a day, because I did it all in one fell swoop before, and people kind of got overwhelmed and freaked out. Oh, okay. So I've spaced it out, but that's all for this month of June, and then they're all behind the Patreon wall. And I want to thank Kimberly and Daryl for joining our Patreon group. Thank you. Thank- I hope Daryl's brother, Daryl, and his other brother, Larry, <laughs> join. <laughs> that's a new well, heart would- choke. I'm old. <laughs> You're very old. We love our 90s comedies. That's what we like to bring up in this show. We also put out two bonus episodes a month. That's where Sonia and I talk about creeps in the news. We may be mentioning what's going on with number 45. <laughs> President yeah. Trump <laughs> being yeah. indicted on 37 oh, charges. I, oh my Maybe. God, feels so good. Celebrate. But that's another time. Today we're going to be talking yes. about our first president. Yes. Uh, Sonia, oh, also, please, thank you so much for all of you that leave us five-star reviews and iTunes. We really appreciate it. That's Kate Don't Hate in Great Britain, Smurf Kisser 17. <laughs> And one guy sent us a little bit of a shade. It's uh, He said, I have nothing against Target selling pride stuff. I do have a problem with selling children's shirts with naked people on them. Uh, what do you mean by that, uh, sir, I, I, ma'am, whatever? It, I don't know if I've ever seen a shirt at Target with naked people on I'm it. I'm there all the time. I'm at Target all the time. But okay. uh, maybe... I'm not sure you were in a Target, sir. It may not have. And also, you're going to be really upset when you hear about Cracker Barrel. Just check that. (laughs) Ah, Cracker Barrel. Welcome to the resistance, Cracker Barrel. (laughs) Oh, God. my, My cackle is worse than usual. Okay, everybody. I am now going to, let's see. Sorry, Sonia. Let me give you a minute. Yo, here. you're fine. I also want to mention that as part of our Patreon, we were doing a newsletter. Right. We have Thank moved, you. We have moved the newsletter to Substack. And you don't really have to be on Patreon for that. If you want to go to Substack and type in What a Creep. I didn't even think I put it under What a Creep podcast. I think it's just What a Creep. You could just go there and you could just sign up and you could get our, our newsletter. So please sign up. And it's fun because we also, we co-host a podcast called Dorking Out, and we always have, uh, you know, there's the movie that we're dorking out, but we also have recommendations, our recs, for streaming and what to read and music to listen to and things like that, other podcasts to check out, and we put that there. So it's just like a yes. nice little bucket of Margo and Sonia in your email. Yes, exactly. All right, I finally figured out how to do this, so... Okay, awesome. Are you ready to hear about George Washington? I can't <laughs> wait. It'd be so fun. All right, give it to me. Hit it to me, hide. Okay, George Washington and the tale of Ona Judge. George Washington, and <laughs> those of you outside of America, in case you don't know, he's called the father of our country and one of America, American history's most revered founding fathers. We have heard tales of how brave he was, and that he could not tell a lie. That's actually some bullshit they told us when we were kids. <laughs> Wooden teeth and chopped a cherry tree. Yes, these, what these are the things I know. Yes. These are the things I know about George Washington. <laughs> these are the Daves I know, I know. He's yep. <laughs> he also famously refused to create a fiefdom with the pro- office of president, which means we're not stuck with someone in office unless they are duly elected and only for a term. So it was for four years. That's what he decided because he could have been King of America if he wanted to or well, whatever. Thanks for that, sir. So he gets that, but, and this is a big, but like many (laughs) white people of his time, he enslaved people. Um, not all white people, by the way, not all white people. Hashtag not all white people. Let me just say this. This is a fact. And though not unusual in his peer group, it's not a great look for a person who is enshrined all across the United States. People want to downplay his racism and evil acts. I listened to an oh God, listening and watching to an episode of Bill Maher and Elon Musk talking on Bill Maher's HBO show and minimizing his actions made oh, s- us realize we need to do a deep dive into one of our the first president's most heinous acts, and that's by talking about badass motherfucker Ona Judge. And I say that with Ooh. all due respect. She was an enslaved woman who escaped from the president's home. Balls the size of church bells on this woman, I am telling you. That takes some fucking guts. I can't wait to hear this. And she remained free despite 
his relentless pursuit of her. This woman is an American oh hero gosh. who everyone who truly believes in liberty and freedom needs to learn about and memorialize. Mm-hmm. And we need to memorialize her contribution to history. Trigger warnings for this episode, racism and slavery. I know we're not supposed to think those are big deals, but I think they are. They are. So here are my sources. And number one is the Twisted Philly podcast. We're friends with Dina Marie of the Twisted Philly yeah. podcast. She's a Pennsylvania historian. She does a lot of creepy tales, but she also loves history. And she talks about social justice, all that good stuff. So Twisted Philly podcast. George Washington's Wikipedia, of course. Daily Mail, Oni Judge, Wikipedia, Drunk History with Jen Kirkman. These are, uh, and listen to these rags, the Mount Vernon.org, Colonial Williamsburg, White House Historical Association, the National Park Service. These are all places you can find this. There's the oh, book wow. I totally recommend by Erica Armstrong Dunbar. She, a teacher, a, a professor at Rutgers University. It's called Never Caught. The Washington's mm-hmm. Relentless Pursuit of the Runaway Slave Ona Judge. There's also a version for middle school kids. So for younger oh, his- okay. history nerds, it's a really great gift, I think. Read it while you can. Well, I guarantee you. Mm-hmm. And that's why you need to read it. That's why I say. Erica Armstrong Dunbar, there was a, a speech she gave at um, SMU. The Black Heritage Trail video. Zinn Education Project. There's Beyond the Bell Tours in Philadelphia, the Museum of the American Revolution, all the rags. History.com, the Fugitive Slave Acts, New York Times. And there's Ona Judge's 1845 interview with The Liberator, which was a a publication for free people. People were against slavery. Yeah. And that was in 1845, like I just said, just before she passed away. All right, Sonia. You did no research on this. I was up till midnight (laughs) watching uh, the History Network did a three night series on George Washington and it had like Bill Clinton. It had all of like the people. Yeah. Yeah. And the people that bend themselves over backwards to excuse Washington's shittiness, which is not necessary, by the way, it's not necessary. Just fucking acknowledge it. Like, uh, all right. George Washington was born February 22nd, 1732. He died December 14th, 1799. He was the first president of the United States. He was commander in chief of the Continental Army. I'm just giving his bona fides. He was the 14th chancellor of College of William and Mary. He was a delegate from Virginia to the Continental Congress, member of the Virginia House of Burgesses. Very interesting. Absolutely needs to be spoken about. For sure. But yeah, of course, let's pretend we're adults and we can handle more information about a person than what's. No, (laughs) no, you can only be good or bad. That's it. Welcome to America. No shit. Washington was born in, like I said, in 1732. His father was from English nobility ish. They came from England, came to America, England. So we had the Puritans, we had our our expats that left England to pursue American things. Um, One of them is to just like to grow land, grow grow crops and have freedom of religion and all this bullshit. And all Washington wanted to do when he was a kid was to (laughs) be bullshit, all that bullshit, (laughs) all that crap that we all want. They just wanted something more than England. And I love England, but you know. I get it. So he's his father was from this English nobility, this line of Washington's that came to America, came to Virginia specifically. And he's a Virginia man. And he would always say he was more of a man of the land than he was a man of war, even though or politics, even he that's where he was his happiest. His father had a tobacco farm. He he was the only child. His father was married once before remarries, has George. And then his father dies. George is 11 years old. He has two older brothers and they sort of take him in and he's he's born when he was 11. He had about 50 slaves. Uh, and one of Hi. my favorite things that I needed to tell you about is like when people talk about I love this. This is like a, the bending over backwards that people do. This is from the Wikipedia page, but I just like this is what we're told. Yeah. Washington was a slave owner who had a complicated relationship with slavery. During his lifetime, he owned a cumulative total of over 557 slaves. 
who were forced to work on his farms where he lived, including the president's house in Philadelphia. Okay, so let's just All unpack right. that. This enslavement of people, what we hear a lot is, well, that's happened before America. Yeah, no shit. That doesn't make it okay. Murder's been happening forever. It doesn't make yeah. it okay. Like, there's lots right. of things that have happened that, you know, we, yeah. we put a stop to. He inherited this land and he just grew up in a time if you were white and you had some money and you had some land you had you had it better than people who did not have those things going for them he wasn't supremely well educated he basically by 15 he was really kind of a man of his own and doing his own thing doing his own thing meaning he had a you know land and he had slaves to work for him for free Mm-hmm. He was a tobacco farmer. He was a very stern guy. When you hear about him, he's not known for the chuckles. He's he's not known as somebody who could light up a room. It's not like, you know, Dolly mm-hmm. Madison. If you ever read about Dolly Madison, like apparently she's like Dolly Parton. Like she was. Oh, OK. V- vivacious and funny. You know, Thomas Jefferson was very flirty and would talk to people. Benjamin Franklin was very charming. No one yeah. says shit about George Washington. I don't think he has much personality. And George Washington was there. <laughs> yes, and George. <laughs> and then came George. And then came George. <laughs> George was a very stern guy. George was very good, by the way, at surveying land. He was very. He was a very good shot. He was. Very brave. I think also just supremely confident in himself. Like in whatever he was going to do, he was going to be the best at it. And he did not give, he did not listen to anybody who had any belly ache or anything going on. When he was first, they were, they had the French, uh, the, the, um, when he was first, uh, he, there was the French revolution that the, the, the United States didn't participate in. There was the French Indian war that happened first. And when he was in charge of troops, he actually had, major losses both in the revolutionary war and in the french indian war i'm sorry those are just that's how we just describe them here it's yeah, not yeah it's not meant to be disrespectful yes, yes. just trying to be historically accurate as much as i can but he ran a tight ship if you deserted him his army he would round you up and if there was more than one of you he will have you tied up uh, to be hanged, he'll put you up on that platform, and then basically he'll let one of them go with a stern warning, and then let the other ones die. And he oh, would stand damn. there while it happened. He, wow. He stood there while men were lashed in the back. Not... Uh. He, and so he, he was stern. He yeah. didn't... He hated anybody. If he showed up at a camp... And everybody was lying around. He'd be like, why are you just lying around? It's like, because there's nothing to do. You're not fighting. They're just like waiting. But he he hated that. Go he, dig a trench or <laughs> chop down a cherry tree or something. Make me some teeth. Do something. Be, <laughs> be some, whittle me some teeth. <laughs> be useful. Oh, apparently it wasn't wooden teeth. He base, He took teeth sometimes from his own slaves. But a lot of times back then, <gasps> people took teeth from the dead. Oh, my God. It's disgusting. I didn't know this. Ugh. Yeah, this is why like people didn't live very long. There's a lot of like germy shit that happens. Yes. No, you. Yes. Ah. He goes to George is like he's a strict leader. He's very but he's very sharp. He's very confident. When he wants to do something, he'll go to the man in charge. He'll talk to the manager. And then talk to them until he gets to do what he wants to do. To speak to the manager of your country, please. Yes. George. You mean the president? I'm writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> he was considered a bit of a hero after the French Indian War. That the, and he wanted to be actually a person that was like of use to England. He loved England. He was very loyal to England. So when he's 27, he meets Martha Washington. Martha was a widow who out, she had four kids and two of them died. She was the same mm-hmm. age as George. She was there about just like a few months apart. And she had a lot of money. She had a lot of land. Let's just say this. Okay. There's a difference between having land and having cash. They were always cash poor or they were pretty much, they were struggling okay. at times for, for cash, but they always had land, but she had land and she also had hundreds of slaves that she brought okay. to the marriage. How were her teeth? Chip good teeth. 
<laughs> Martha did have good teeth, from what I understand. Okay, good. She was a bit. She, of, she was a woman that she outlived her parents. She outlived her brothers at a very young age. She lost everybody, and she inherited all this mm. land. Being a person that didn't have a hus- have a husband or a father or brothers, she had a lot of power too. But yeah. all the slaves that she had from her late husband, she inherited. And so Washington had his and she had hers. And they combined them. For his relation- and her slaves? His and her enslaved people. Cute. Pink and blue. How cute. Mm. Now let's just be un- understand what this means is that they had people who had no rights. They had people Correct. who could not shop around for a better gig. They would make them, they, they had seems, Washington was very vain. He was very well aware of his appearance because he was pretty handsome. He was six, like we said, tall guy stuff. He was six foot two, very muscular. He was very physically strong. And so people, swipe, you'd, you'd swipe right you'd on You'd swipe him. right on that shit. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, like I said, no sense of humor, like pretty, pretty stiff. You definitely would pose with a fish. Just saying. (laughs) He, so he, he and Martha, they start this life together. She doesn't know him as the guy that goes away to war. She just knows him as the guy who runs this. So they get all this land and George is like, they, they have a very successful tobacco farm. But at the time, people didn't know about crop rotation and that you had to change it out. And so George, right. George learns this, and then George learns about selling other crops, and he's selling tobacco, and he's selling grains, and he's selling us all to England, but England was like starting to take a lot of taxes from him, and England wasn't okay with him buying more land. See, him and Martha wanted to get even more hmm. land, and England was telling them, no, you can't do that. You're, you're part of the... Br- you're, you're part of Britain. You can't, you can't afford, you can't do that. And it's because Britain didn't want Americans having vast amounts of land and especially a guy that just won a war. They were just yeah. like, then he's just going to take over. So they wanted to put the kibosh on that. So that's really the thing that put the burr okay. under his ass. Okay. He didn't, you know, it was, that, it was just the taxation. That's what really sort of pissed him off. And, and it's happening up and down the, the 13 colonies right. at the time. You're, when you are in, you are enslaved, when you're an enslaved person, they give you the name they want to give you. You work the hours they tell you to work. You don't get to say, no, I don't want to do that. You can't marry. You are legally not allowed to be educated. Like there, th- there's, you're not allowed to learn how to read or write. Many of them don't teach them religion. And I thought that was weird. And it's like, no, because if you learn about religion and God, you're not going to be okay with being someone's slave. That's just, it's not going to make sense. Yeah. And they used to tear families. Like you weren't allowed to get married, but that doesn't mean you're not married or, you know, whatever. You're not with someone and they have their families and then they would separate family. It, and you have no fucking say. It's it, This happened over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. And also as a woman... You just have no say over your own agency of your body. Yes. You sleep where they tell you to sleep and you don't have like a locked door. You're not allowed to fight back. You could try to fight back, but you'll be beaten even worse. And here's another like terrible predicament. But if you get pregnant, sometimes they don't want that. Now, if you do get pregnant, your child becomes their property. Your property. You're just like a horse or a watch, you know, yep. or the land. They own you. They own you. So you don't get to vote. You don't get to go anywhere they don't want you to go. You eat what they tell you to eat. Eat, yep. And uh, Martha and George were dandies. They both loved nice clothes. And so they always had, had, he had his own seams, a man that created his own clothes was a, a, a gentleman whose last name was Judge. He's Oni's father. And Oni's father was a man that was in England, and you could be an indentured servant. So an indentured servant is when you're saying, like, Sonia, I'll be your servant for four years. But when I'm done, I'll get to leave, and then I'll, I'll be your seamstress for four years. So all your fancy outfits that you like to wear, your colorful yeah. Is that frocks. where it's like they pay for you to go somewhere, and then you kind of work off your debt? 
Yes. By being in debt. Is that what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're working off your debt. Her father, Andrew Judge, was from England. He went from England to America to be an indentured servant to George Washington. Why? I don't know. But he was the man. Yeah. His name is Andrew Judge. And he, uh, he created Washington's uniforms and outfits. And Washington was very specific. Because everything looked great on him, by the way. When you're 6'2 and strong, <laughs> you look good and shit. Yeah. So he, the, the, all their clothes were tailored beautifully. The slaves wore whatever they told them to wear. And it was like very scratchy yeah. materials. You get one pair of shoes if you're lucky. If you're lucky, by the way. You don't right. always have that luxury. It's all. That's not what I heard. I heard that they love being slaves and that they were treated super well. You know, I'm not saying <laughs> it's so nauseating because what are the real odds of that? Really? It's so fucking gross. It's so gross. I've just had people that were my boss treat me shitty just because they had that little bit of power. What if you yes. had a whole strong human being and they had to do whatever you told them to do? And Washington was not above having his slaves whipped into submission. Awful. Yeah. So Andrew Judge meets a woman named Betty Davis. No, not that Betty Davis. <laughs> she had Betty Davis eyes. She did have Betty Davis eyes, though. She was beautiful. She was Martha's um, seamstress, worked on Martha's clothes, and she and Andrew have a relationship is it consensual? This is all the things we have to ask now. Like, nobody even bothered to ask yeah. that. Who knows? She's biracial. He's white. And that's where they have Ona Marie Judge. And she, they say her birthday is January 1st, 1773. But she might have been born in 1774. No okay. one really knows. Because people didn't note these things for... Right. You know, because they didn't know if the baby was going to live. They didn't know. You know, it was rough. Yes. They just didn't keep track of that sort of stuff. Though. No. Oni grows up and this is the, that's a nickname that Washington, the Washingtons give her. I'm going to try not to say that because I prefer to say Ona, which is what historians are saying now, because that was her real okay. name. Because Oni's probably a little bit infantilizing, as yes. I say on the History Chicks podcast. She grows up in this house and her mother teaches her how to sew, how to make the clothing, and she's she's good at it, but she, Oni can Oni can see like they're slaves. They they're they're lucky because they're in the house versus being outside. But Ona also knows that Mrs. Washington, Martha Washington, likes her better than others because she's light skinned. Mm -hmm. Right. She's very light skinned with freckles. She's very obedient because that's what her mother teaches her. She also has a brother named Austin, and they and the Washingtons. It's back and forth. There are cases where they tried to keep families together. Yay for them, I guess. I mean. Yay for doing the bare minimum. For doing the bare minimum to treat these people with humanity. What a hero. Yeah. Washington doesn't actually want to be president. It's not. He was really a successful farmer. But the other delegates from the, the states are a fucking shit show. He fights in the Revolutionary War. I forgot to mention that. That's kind of a big deal. <laughs> oh, there's that whole thing. There's an American Revolution. And look, I give him that. I also say someone would have done watch it eventually. Ha watch Hamilton on Disney+. Plus. You get it. You'll, you'll get, get it. it. You'll, get the, you'll get the gist. Look, someone was going to do it eventually for sure. But he's the one who actually was the first one to do it. Right. He had tremendous failures and tremendous successes. But he all that manages like in any sport is the winner. Doesn't matter how you won as long as you won. So right. he's the one that won. And so all the states are fighting and they're all fighting about mostly slavery, which they won't tell you with the Civil War in some places. They'll tell you it's yes. not about that, which is fucking absurd. Yes. It's absurd. And when we were kids, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but mine was my education was more like, well, that's a thing the South did. Not up here, us Yankees. Like, we were better. We had the Underground Railroad. We were, we, we didn't yes. have that shit. Not true. There were more slaves in New York City than in the South. Yeah. There were slaves in Philadelphia. There were slaves in every single state in the country. Right. But at the time, the 13 colonies, excuse me. But what was happening was that a religious fervor was coming through. People were just thinking, like, 
this is really not a great look. This is not what we should be doing. We can't be God fearing people and doing this at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so there were every state had its own law and there are ridiculous ones that a black person is three fifths of a human being. Yes. Which I remember it's it's I mean, I remember reading that I wasn't alive at the time. No, (laughs) none of us were alive. Neither of us were alive at the time. This is a long time ago. But still, we need to know about this shit. This is just, yeah, yeah. it's just fucking ridiculous. And so when he, so he's in Mount Vernon, Virginia, and that's where all the Washington shit takes place. So they have to move to New York City when he becomes president. And he's the one who comes with the idea of calling them Mr. President. He swears it on the Bible. There's certain things that he did. There's no policies that we follow that George Washington created that were like, wow. Whereas Hamilton mm-hmm. really was thinking the long game. Yeah. Who's right. also problematic, trust me, but not to this yes. level. But Washington was like, fine, I'll be your ambassador. Because he got along with the French. He got along with the English. He got, I mean, he beat the English. But anyway, so he and Martha, they go to New York. And when they get there, Martha doesn't want to go. Martha wants to stay on the on the ranch and just boss people around. And she was a bit of a, an emotional mm-hmm. C word. But, and, and Ona could manage her. And she liked Ona because okay. Ona could keep her... Also, the emotional labor that Ona had to fucking put up with. like she, Seriously. So she goes with them to New York, and they live in New York for a few years. And then they move to Pennsylvania. And this is where shit gets wild. Okay. In Pennsylvania, they're, because of the Quakers, mostly, there's this whole idea of slavery bad. We need to really not be a place where there's slavery. This cannot be... Okay, and so there's this idea in Pennsylvania of gradually ending slavery and that a person at a certain time, if you're in Pennsylvania, like if you bring an enslaved person into Pennsylvania, if they are there more than six months, they can then apply to be free. They're basically free. Okay. George Washington moves his staff from New York to Philadelphia, Sixth and Market, right by the Liberty Bell. And somebody tells him, okay. But you have to understand, these people can are free in six months. You know that, right? And he's like, well, I'm not doing that. So he, every six months, he takes his staff and he has them go away. Either they spend a day in New York or they go to Trent, New Jersey, just over the water, or he sends them back to Mount Vernon. It's so fucking it's shitty. It's fucking shitty. And this is what he does with the people. He's breaking, breaking the law. Breaking the law. That's breaking the law. Breaking the law. He's breaking the law. That's the president. He's sending these people out and then bringing them back. Fuck this guy. Oh, fuck him. I mean, seriously. He's president, by the way. So he, it, that he's like the ultimate authority. And Oni is like stuck. She's Ona, excuse me. So she's becoming, she's 16 when she arrives in Pennsylvania. When she arrives in Pennsylvania, like I said, they're gradually getting rid of slavery. There's 15,000 people in Philadelphia. There's a lot of free black people. In Philadelphia, and she's never seen this. It was it just yeah. blew her mind. And being Martha's now like sidekick, she went shopping with her. She went around the city with her. She interacted with people all the time. Yeah, and she's seen it all the time. Right. Wow. And Martha, and they're and they're very they're afraid. They don't want their people to go. Another person that's an important part of this story, and I learned this from History Chicks, which is a great podcast, is a man named Hercules. And Hercules Pousset? Hercules. 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 He was the chef for George Washington. And there was a show, I think it was on Netflix, and it was about barbecues or or, um, indigenous cooks in America, like where cooking comes from. This man, Hercules. I would like that. You would really like that. It's because it's like history and cooking. Yeah. George Washington. The Washingtons had a chef named Hercules who was an exceptionally good chef. Like he just really knew how to cook. And he was so good that he was allowed, everyone wanted to go over to their house for dinner or for parties because Hercules was the chef and every meal was perfect. He was a bit of a dandy himself. He was a, he was a slave and he, but he wore really nice clothes. He had a gold tip walking cane. He was allowed to sell his merchandise so he can make stuff and make extra batches and sell it and keep that money. He, mm-hmm. Which is really a big deal for the time. Okay. But Washington is always worried about what if they leave me? What if the what if they go? 
what am I going to do? So he's just constantly, he's trying, he's such a control freak that he's like constantly. Fucking prick. Yeah. So the staff is, there's always this like whispering, are people going to escape? Are people going to leave? And Ona is like really tired. I mean, she's, she's, she's okay. I mean, it's fine. It's a fine assignment, but it's just emotionally dragging. She has to take care of the grandchildren. She sleeps with the grandchildren. She has no privacy. She's got to be with Martha all the time, who's really annoying. She has to set up all the parties and things like that. She doesn't want to be a slave. No, she wants to be her own person. Imagine that. Imagine wanting to be a free person. What? So so at one point, Martha, I'm sorry, Ona's mother, Betty, and her brother, Austin, both died within like a year of each other. Hmm. And she's like around 20 years old at this point. And she's like, what am I even doing? I don't like being here. I'm meeting all these free. And so is Hercules is hearing from free black people like, why don't you leave? Why don't you get out? They didn't know that they were allowed to leave. That after six months, they were supposed to be free. They didn't know this. So they're hearing this from free black people, but also from white people that are allies, let's say. Yes. And they're learning about this stuff. So Oni is like, well, this sounds like some bullshit. I want to I want to get out of here. So in 1797, she just decides, like, I'm going to leave. So there's always this who gave her the money. Somebody Hmm. gave Ona the money. But Ona went one day. George and Martha are having dinner. It's on a Saturday night. She slips out. She gets on a boat and she gets the hell out. And with two days, George Washington puts an advertisement in the Pennsylvania Gazette, May 24th, 1796, asked, saying, for $10, I'm looking for Oni Judge. She's a mulatto woman, which was the term they used. $10. Woo! And makes a point. She was absconded by the President of the United States. And she takes off. Another scary thing about being an enslaved person, if you get kidnapped if you if you take off and then somebody captures you and takes you back and this is the law at the time washington put into law it was the escaped um slaves it was the the slavery act yeah that they the first one that he put together basically said if you find a slave and they seem to be there they're they're on the run you can capture them and and take them back to their owner like that's okay if you help them, you're breaking the law. So, so fucked up. It's, do, go ahead. You were saying that they don't know who gave her the money. Are you, is that insinuating that she got it from Hercules? It might have been Hercules or somebody that was a benefactor of Hercules. Okay. The funny thing about, or not funny thing about Hercules is soon after she leaves, the other staff are interrogated. Because they're like, mm-hmm. what do these people know? Did the, were they in on it? And I think he was one of the ones they were really focusing on because he was kind of a celebrity, right? So they ask him, "Were you a part of this?" And Hercules, he's the emerald of his time. He's the emerald bang. Is that what <laughs> they say? Bang. Yes. He's more like the Anthony Bourdain. He's more just like the suave <laughs> hipster type. <laughs> And, like he says, and he says, no, I had no idea. I don't know where she is because Washington's pissed because he just doesn't like to lose. He doesn't like to. Yeah, be, of course. Right. right. Washington also, he's a, it, he's a prick, but he's also saying publicly, I'm not really, you know, into slavery. I feel kind of conflicted about oh, it. Oh, but- he's not into it. He's not into it, y'all. He just wants to keep her safe. He just wants to keep, he's treating people well, but he's like, they, they have to, and this is one of the, one of the places I read, and I think even it was like, um. It was like an encyclopedia page. It was like one of those. But it said that um, he was conflicted because he had over 500 slaves. But if he set them free, they'd be splitting up families. So he decided to keep them. I'm like, that doesn't make a lick of sense. Like, that's just not true. See? I'm, I'm a good guy. Hashtag not all presidents. Not all presidents. And it's, you got to think of the times. Everybody was doing it. Let me say this again. Not everyone was doing it. Four of our no. original presidents were doing it. Let's be clear. Yes. But, and he was the first one, but not all, yeah, not all people were doing this. She f- goes to New Hampshire 
once again, they're looking for her. Washington is pissed, but he's trying. Like, first he puts an ad in the paper that his advisors are like, that's really not a great idea because you kind of look like a jackass, you know, that you're looking for your slave. Yeah. So they're questioning the staff. And Hercules is just given, you know, raked over the coals. And he says, I don't know. I don't know where she went. I'm not planning to go anywhere. He had kids. He had family. They send him back to Mount Vernon and put him out in the fields. Backbreaking labor. Yeah. As a message to everybody. Yes. If you know something and you don't tell us, even if you don't know anything, we're, someone's in trouble. If one of you acts yeah. up, you're all in trouble. Which goes and back to a, his I'm way he runs you, a troop. Yeah, and it's like I'm putting you in your place. Like you've gotten, very much. You've gotten, you know, this the idea of like you're uppity. You're being uppity. You're big for your britches. Me. Yeah. You think you're something. You think you're cute. Yeah. Right. So he sends him out there. Hercules escapes and then moves to New York and becomes a restaurateur. So he. Hercules, Hercules, he does well. Yeah, good job. Mona goes to New Hampshire, and like I said, there were people that had money that, like, they brought her in. There was this underground railroad, and she discovers church. People take her to the the, the local Christian church. She becomes converts to Christianity. She really is like, no, I'm not supposed to be a slave. Like, this is not what God wants for me. Yeah. And she's living there, and as soon as she lives there, she's looking for a fella. Because being a single woman in this world is not easy. And, right. and as, a, as a, a freed slave, she doesn't have a lot of protection. There's Correct. not a lot of options for getting an apartment. Like I said, and getting a lock on the door. Like, it's really a scary thing. Y'all, women couldn't even get credit cards until the 1970s. Exactly. So. <laughs> this is how, so like 200 years before, like imagine it, and you're, yeah, right. So Oni, in the meantime, she's finding a husband. She's going to the church stuff, and she's meeting somebody. And so Washington sends a guy that does customs and sends him to Ona. Somebody there in New Hampshire recognizes Ona on the street. And then the word gets back to the Washingtons, like, hey, do you know that's where she is? And he goes, great. You go up there. You go get her, and you kidnap her, and you bring her back to me. Yeah. The guy shows up at Ona. So the guy goes there and he sends a note and says, hey, I'm looking for a maid or a cook or something. If you're looking for a job, come by my house. And so Ona goes by the house because she's a servant at this time. Yeah. By the way, all the Washington's called their slave servants, by the way, which is a big difference. Big difference mm-hmm. between. OK, so like we're recovering our servant. What? So mm-hmm. he sends the guy goes there. And Ona looks him right in the eye and says, no, not going, not going. And the guy, like, he's trying to play a game. And then she realizes, like, he's asking for too much oh. information. Yeah. And she's she, smart. She's smart. And she's also like, this is bullshit. And she gets out of there. Yeah. Washington is pissed and says, I want you to go back there and bring her here. Bring her to Mount Vernon. So they go back. And then this time, by this time, Ona had gotten married to a guy named Jack Staines, who's a free black man and is also okay. a sailor. So he's out at sea sometimes. So she has three kids. So she's got little baby Eliza. Oh, and I, I'm sorry. Let me just take this back a little bit. One yeah. of the things that made her want to leave was that Martha Washington was going to gift her to her <gasps> granddaughter as her granddaughter's new servant and move back to Mount <sighs> Vernon. And the granddaughter was known to be a total asshole. Nobody liked her. Right. She was spoiled. She was obnoxious. And she was marrying a man that the, an English man, like they were like, what are you kidding me? But she was going to marry an English man who uh, had like, it was married, it was divorced and was like 20 years older than her and had a drinking hmm. problem. So the Washingtons were like, well, we don't like this, but if she's going to do it anyway, we have to make it proper. So the big gift they were going to give her was Ona. And Ona had met this woman. <laughs> And was like, bullshit, I'm not being her slave. She's an asshole. No. So when they go to get her, the first time they say, look, no, no problem. We'll just have you delivered to this woman and you could be, you know, you could be her, her new servant and everything's okay. And after a certain amount of time, you could apply for your freedom. And she was like, no, not doing that. Because she knows she, the second she shows up, she's going to be stuck yeah, there. fuck that. By the time they come back to get her again, she has a baby. Washington wants her and her baby 
because the baby belongs to him because it belonged to Martha. The baby was Martha's because it was Martha's line, right? Because that was her. Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck these people. Once again, and, and the guys, the men that come to get her are white men, and they're always shocked to find out that she's like t- looking them right in the eye and saying, no, they're not used yeah. to a person of color talking back. How, d- how dare how you? How dare you? Yes. Ona's like, fuck off. No. And they, they don't take her because at this point, within two years, <laughs> I love that that worked. <laughs> it totally. Yeah, it's like, you're coming, with, you're coming with us. We're taking you back to, nah, fuck off with that shit. All and right. also that. Well, we tried. We asked her. And I she asked said her. T- tried to think, but nothing happens. I don't know. <laughs> what? I know. It's, it's funny to me because I was like. They don't bring guns and like have two or three guys like, you know, put her in handcuffs and drag her away. Like, no, they just, they just say, a, come with know. me and, and we're going like, nah. in. Nah. No. And they send a note to Washington and it's just a shoulder shrug emoji. Like, burr, burr. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they just, and, and he's furious. He's like, what do you mean she refuses? What do you mean she says No. But he can't make it too big of a stink out of it because, once again, he doesn't want to be known as yeah. The people are like, um, even though he is you're trying slave. to like, yeah, exactly. So, 1999, George Washington, he's miffed about this. He's on his he. It's at Christmas time in Virginia. He's riding around his horse, and this big storm happens. And Washington was like just one of those working sun up to sundown, like just never mm-hmm. 66 years old. Comes into the house after a long day. He's drenched. And his and he just his wooden teeth are chattering. His wooden teeth are going. Da, 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 da. So he's sitting his at the table. Stolen dead man's teeth are chattering. <laughs> having, yeah, exactly. Having, I don't know, over Hercules meal or not, but he's he's eating dinner and he's like getting more and more sick as he's eating dinner. He goes to bed. He's he wakes up the next day, sore throat, can't talk. Send the doctors. They try bleeding him out. Nothing works. He dies. And they had to wait three days to bury him because he was terrified of being buried alive. That was like a big, actually a big thing that people. Oh, my God. Yeah, can you imagine? Oh, my God. So, yeah. So he's just hanging around the, the reason, house. The reason, the reason he's afraid of that, by the way, is because it probably fucking happened. It happened a lot because oh people go into God, comas so and horrible. they didn't know what that was. Oh, that is a nightmare. That is like the worst. Right. So he. Yeah. He said, you have to wait three days and then let me go. And then, then you can pronounce me dead. So he's, he's dead. Deader than a doornail. In his will, and everybody gets this wrong. In his will, he says, Martha, you get everything. All of the people that were my slaves, when you die, they'll all be free. So, so half, the, half, half the of slaves. them, let's say half of them. Not hers, and they're yeah. not freed. They're promised, and how? When is she going to die? She's the same age as him, and she doesn't work very yeah. hard. So how long is you know? Right. So Martha spends the next year going around the house, going around the property, terrified that they're going to off her because the word gets out <laughs> as soon as she dies. As soon as that woman dies, we're going to be free. We're going to be freed. Oh my God! They, I would be afraid to eat. Around them. Oh. Right. So she dies a year later. Oh, snap. And his slaves are let go. Her slaves are not. They're given to her granddaughter and her shitty <laughs> husband, who's now her ex-husband, who now so owns half of everything she owns. So fucked up. Ona Judge's husband dies. Uh, her kids die before her. It's a long life she oh. lives. But she's... She's a servant, and in 1845, people track her down. She goes her whole life being the property of Martha Washington and Martha Washington's and uh, descendants. Excuse me. Fucked up. So literally, so her whole life, she really is someone else's property, and she knows this. So she can't yeah. travel too much. She can't, so she's kind of in the woods in New Hampshire, in this very small town, and leads mm-hmm. kind of a quiet life. And then around the mid-1800s, there's this 
the, you know, these all these slave laws that were passing and then they're overthrowing them and then putting a new law and they're, they're getting rid of that law and everything's getting confusing, which is setting us up for civil war, which is going to happen over slavery. Right. Once again, <laughs> don't don't at me. This is not yes. up for debate. This is exactly what happened. So Ona is being interviewed by the local papers that are for people that are against slavery. Mm hmm. And she talks about her life and she just she just says like, yeah, it was OK. It was an OK place to be. But still, I was someone's property and I wasn't meant to be anybody's property. No person is. Right. And, which is a brave thing to say. And she gave two big interviews before she passed away. February 25th, 1848. She lived to be 75 and she was buried in Greenland, New Hampshire, where I have no idea that is. But it's hopefully the, three, hopefully three days after. <laughs> oh, God, just, to make, be... just to make sure. She so she outlives her kids. It's awful. And yeah, it's 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 terrible because, uh, yeah, so she they're not quite exactly sure where her body is buried, but it's become sort of a thing in history in the history nerd circle to find out where exactly she was buried and hmm. put a, a memorialize it somehow. Yeah, And, uh. That's the t that's the case of Ona Judge. The George Washington is our creep this week, and it's the story of Ona Judge. Good job, my friend. Thank you. Fuck George Washington. That's right. <laughs> Hot take. Everyone should burn their one dollar bills. <laughs> no. They're not worth anything anymore anyway. Uh, I'm like, don't don't burn your money, y'all. No. But seriously, fuck that guy. It was yeah. I mean, it's just. Fuck his wife, too. Fuck her. Martha was a real trash monster. <laughs> Do you want to hear about someone who's not a creep? Yes, please. Okay. So you might know Carrie, Carrie Washington from one of her first big roles. She was in Save the Last Dance. Yes. Um, she was also Olivia Pope in Scandal. Um, she, when she did that show, by the way, when she started Scandal, she was the first black woman to star on a network TV show it, or network drama, I should say, in over 38 years. Isn't that bananas? Oh my God. So, uh, she's, as you know, an actress, she's been nominated for an Emmy four times, uh, twice for Scandal, once for playing Anita Hill. And another time for her role in Little Fires Everywhere, which I've never watched. Did you watch that one? Mm -mm. No, I need to watch it. It's on Hulu. And then she was also in like Ray, The Last King of Scotland, Django Unchained. But I picked Kerry Washington, uh, one, because, you know, she's a famous actress who often uses her platform to fight the good fight. Um, I also picked her because her last name is Washington and yeah, I thought it would brilliant. be clever. And also... She graduated from George Washington University. <laughs> so there's a lot of things going on. But she does, like, use her platform to fight the good fight. She speaks up often about violence against women. She raises money to protect, like, civil liberties of, like, our most vulnerable citizens. She's, you know, an advocate for the arts. So I thought she was a good person to pick. So we're going to start at the beginning Carrie Washington was born January 31st, 1977 in the Bronx. 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 Represent. Boogie down. Boogie down Bronx. Uh, her parents were Earl and Valerie Washington. Uh, her dad was a real estate agent and her mom was a college professor. Um, she was raised like to be very uh, civically minded. She was like a very engaged politically engaged person um on her 18th birthday they took her out to dinner to celebrate and it's not just because it was her birthday it was the fact that she, now she was able to vote um that was like a real rite of passage in her family um, in my family they would too. Talk, yeah, yeah my I, my, I remember my dad taking me to go vote when Isn't i was finally exciting? ready yeah my dad um more conservative than i but he never <laughs> doesn't vote like he takes that very seriously um at the age of 13 they took her to see uh nelson mandela speak when he was here at yankee stadium this was after he was released from prison um as a high schooler she uh this was like during aids epidemic all that stuff she actually got training as a peer educator and she used to like 
work at the Advo- the Adolescent Health Center, and she would do advocacy work around <gasps> reproductive health. Attended George Washington University. Uh, she double majored in anthropology and sociology. She's a real smarty, everybody. Um, but that's not why I really picked. I picked her because she she serves as like a domestic violence awareness ambassador for a group called the Purple Purse Project, which is an organization that raises money to help women get out of abusive relationships. And then on top of that, it also teaches women financial literacy, which is something I like care as someone who's recently divorced. I didn't know shit about money. It's not something they teach you in high school, which they should. And so this is one of those things that helps women like figure out how to support themselves yeah. and, and help them get, I don't I want to say like almost like more for their money. Like there's things you can do with your money to well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, stay out of debt and really live on your own, things like that. She actually spoke um there was a United State of Women summit that was at the White House and she spoke at it and you know, she just wanted people to know like there's a the important thing to know is there's a way out. That there is a way to learn to become financially self-supporting and take care of yourself so that you can make decisions that are empowering. She's also a board member of V-Day, which is this global movement that is about violence against women and girls all over the world. Like, you know, obviously not just something that happens here. She's a big supporter of, you know, the LGBT, sorry, LGBTQ plus community (laughs) sorry i want to make i if you say it too fast i'm gonna miss something so i want to make sure i get it right um she was named an honorary chairperson of glisten which is the gay lesbian straight education network she's received the glad vanguard vanguard award she's done human rights campaign videos um she did one after the nightclub shooting in orlando where it was so awful. She um, actually, d- you know, did something that we try to do here on our podcast, too, which is we try to tell the stories of the people who are impacted by it's not just a gross, true crime thing. Like she was telling the stories of the people who were killed there, like giving mm-hmm. stories to the names of the people who died there, which is, I think, really important. Um, She also set up this program called Vision into Power, and it's a program that um, it, like, helps these 10, like, grassroots organizations, um, encouraging people to vote and things like that. All 10 of the organizations have, like, women or women of color in major leadership positions. She's the co-chair of a fund that's called the Black Voices for Black Justice, and that supports black leaders and black-led organizations to, you know, help them organize voters. Um, And she's done things that are just, they feel small, but they're big deals. Like, she invests in, like, uh, women-led startups. Um, You know, she start like, she funded a sustainable jewelry brand, you know, it's like, it's just wow. stuff like that. It's like these little things. And, but there's this like other, like really cool story. So when Jimmy Kimmel went on vacation, she guest hosted for Jimmy Kimmel. And one of the things she did was she helped the background actors on Jimmy Kimmel's show qualify for the Screen Actors Guild health insurance. So like people don't know this, but like when you are a background actor or whatever, There's certain like a a threshold that you have to hit, a requirement you have to hit in order to get that. She referred to it as that sweet, sweet Screen Actors Guild health insurance. (laughs) And you have to hit like a certain like amount of screen time or lines or whatever. And so there's these background actors on the show and she brought them back out on stage and had them deliver like all these extra lines so that they would qualify. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? That's so amazing. like one of them was like he was just like forty dollars and eighty seven cents away from qualifying for insurance. Like two of them instantly like qualified for health insurance. So 
it's just like these little things that you could do that like make a big difference. Like she does these big things, right? Like charities and videos and all that. And then she does these other things where it's like helping these guys get health insurance, investing in a woman led business that I think is fucking rad. That is rad. I just, she's on top of all of this, y'all on top of like being a good person. She's beautiful. <laughs> Like, it's like, ah, oh, like, and you get to be beautiful, unfair, <laughs> unfair, but, but she is. Um, so that's our non creep is Carrie Washington. That is a great selection. I loved, I was wondering who you were going to pick for that. So I, that was actually surprising, but very well earned. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If you like the sound of our voices, including my, sorry, my croaky. <laughs> you, you are. You are doing oh, a keep... fabulous job, my friend. Y'all couldn't see as I kept drinking water to, to, to soothe my throat. But if you do like the sound of our voices, we do host a show called Dorking Out, where we just dork out about movies. Sonia, what are we going to be dorking out about <laughs> next? I'm so excited. This is a request. She's requested this movie a couple of times, and we're finally going to Marissa. do it. Um, we are going to be talking about Roadhouse starring Patrick Swayze. Um, I don't like to talk about movies as guilty pleasures because I'm like, you just like it. Just admit that you like it. I I like Roadhouse, so I'm really excited to talk about because I think it's bananas. I can't wait to talk about Roadhouse. So that's what we're doing. Roadhouse. We're doing Roadhouse next. So and so be sure to subscribe. That way you can listen to that episode or subscribe to this show if you like what you're hearing. We really appreciate it. Please leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. If you give us a five-star review on iTunes, we'll mention you on the show. We love it. We are always looking for suggestions. We love it when you send us suggestions. So for creeps and also for non-creeps, all those places I mentioned at the top of the show, or once again, our email, whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. I don't know if I mentioned this, but whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. If you would like some stickers, send us your address. We will send them to you in the mail. Subscribe to our Patreon. Like I said, all those great episodes are up there now. And uh, Sonia, oh, yes. We love when you use the Andy Potts gif. We got one from Ghostbusters when you're giving us your suggestions. We think that's amazing. But just pick something of your own or just send us a note. You don't have to go through all the rigmarole. Sonia, where can they find you? You can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter, Instagram, and the TikTok. And you can find our Substack at What a Creep. Where can people find you, my friend? You can find me on Twitter at Brooklyn Margo. My site is brooklynfitchick.com. I'm on Instagram at Brooklyn Fit Chick, and I am on TikTok <laughs> at Margo Donahue, where I put lots of clips there of the movies that we're talking about and all kinds of things. Brooklyn are up on my, yeah, on my, all my things, all my things. So also, anyway. damn it, Max. And also, <laughs> damn it, Max. All right, y'all. So in the meantime, be good. Stay safe. Get out of the smoke if you can. Wear your masks when that shit's happening. Don't be a creep. A creep. Thank you for listening to us talk about creeps. You can follow us at What A Creep Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But don't follow us too closely. You can email us your creepy stories at whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. But please keep your dick pics to yourself. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.